Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm Justin Bridges. I'm the Head of Treasury and Pensions here at Shropshire Council. My presentation today, I'm going to give you an update on the joint collaboration work that Shropshire has been involved in to date with other pension funds and also the national collaboration work following the, some of the budget announcement referred to in James's presentation. We'll also give a, a brief update on the pension fund's investments over the last 12 months, how the fund managers have performed and the changes we've made to the fund during the year. It's clear from the budget announcement that the government is looking for local authorities to, to put forward proposals to make uh, pool investments to significantly re reduce costs whilst maintaining investment performance. Prior to this announcement, Shropshire had already been in discussions with two other funds with regards to joint collaboration and what could be done in order to reduce the cost between the three funds. The first area the three funds decided to look at was passive investment. Passive managers aim to track an index, for example the FTSE World Index, which currently has over 2,200 global stocks within it. By holding all the stocks within this index, the managers produce returns in line with that index. The Shropshire Fund currently has over 300 million in global equities managed on this basis, but passive assets between the three funds totaled over £2.5 billion. Initial due diligence meetings were held with our existing passive fund managers and the two other funds to ascertain if we pooled our assets, what effect this would have on the level of fees paid. Now these initial discussions were very positive and as a group we could demonstrate that significant savings could be achieved. Following these initial discussions and the budget announcement, four other funds opted to join our group to take this work forward. There was now um, over £6 billion pounds of assets under management between these six funds, which we were expected to reduce the fees even further. Interviews have recently taken place with passive fund managers at the start of November, with the shortlisted managers and all seven funds, and the final decision on the outcome of this is expected shortly. But what we've demonstrated is a group that significant fee savings will be made between the seven funds. The work I'm taking today fits in with the government agenda, but more work needs to be done to achieve the significant savings referred to in the budget announcement. By looking at the passive assets at the first place, this is the first stage in the process, as the savings can be achieved reasonably quickly. But other assets like property, infrastructure or private equity take longer, and the government accept this. A period of three years before all asset pools become active appears to be likely. Following on from the budget announcement, all G LGPS funds were invited to further meetings which were held during August with the DCLG, HM Treasury and the Local Government Association to gain further understanding of what common criteria the government are looking for the proposals to make to deliver savings. <coughs> what is clear is that the government will need to see significant efforts by all LGPS funds to reduce running costs and especially investment management fees or it will legislate to do this. A few funds working together to negotiate better fees with their managers will save money as de demonstrated by Shropshire's collaboration work. This does not get close to the sufficiently ambitious requirement of the announcement. Following these initial meetings, it seems the government's primary criteria is scale, savings and governance. In relation to scale, asset pools in the region of £30 billion pounds have been suggested, has been suggested as a likely size that the government are looking for although there is expected to be some flexibility in around this. Although the government have stated they expect significant savings to be made, they haven't actually stated the amount, but they expect this to be several hundreds of billions across the entire LGPS on an annual basis. Governance is also a key theme emerging, with decisions around asset allocation to each of the asset pools going forward expected to remain locally. The funds are expected not to have a say going forward of which managers are selected, as this will be a decision for the few professionals from the asset pools. The secondary criteria relates to simplicity and speed of implementation. The government is not looking for complex structures to be set up and take years to implement, but wants simple structures that can achieve significant savings which can be delivered reasonably quickly. 
In response to the budget announcement and following on from the joint collaboration where the Shropshire has already been involved with, due to the scale and size of the savings the government is looking for, Shropshire has been involved in further work with a number of other administrative authorities in order to, to submit a joint proposal to the government which will be fully costed and demonstrate potential savings which can be achieved. It is expected that the group of more than 25 other administrative authorities across the country will come up with two or three different pooling options for the government to consider. With this in mind, various work streams have been set up and a local authority steering group to progress this work analyse the various pooling options, collate data and cost out proposals. The agreed work streams involve equities, bonds, property, infrastructure, private equity and hedge funds in consideration of more internal management rather than external management. They're also looking at collective investment vehicles like the one that London have recently set up, which 31 of the London boroughs have signed up to. Support to this group is being provided by an investment advisor who is talking regularly to the government to ensure that proposals meet the expected criteria. They will also be assisting each working group in analysing ideas and providing valuable input into analysing data and costing options. As part of this exercise, a request for data has been sent to all 89 administrative authorities so further analysis can be undertaken. The draft report is expected to be submitted to government in December for consideration before a final report being submitted in February next year in line with the government's timetable. Further work will also be done to see which pooling option suits Shropshire Fund the best. The government is likely to announce the outcome of the consultation in the next budget announcement in March 2016 once all the various pooling options submitted have been analysed to ensure that significant savings will be achieved. As you can see, there's a lot of work to be done between now and next February, but Shropshire has been actively involved in joint collaboration work to date, and is also part of the national collaboration that's going on currently, with a large number of other funds for a joint response to be submitted to the government for consideration. In summary, what is clear, the government see the LGPS as a single entity and not 89 individual funds, and it will not be left to each individual fund to come up with savings on a standalone basis. Nationally, government wants a small number of options. Six asset pools have been suggested that are scalable and can be shown to fit together to make a national picture. Funds not putting forward sufficiently ambitious proposals will be mandated to join one of the pools created and no fund will be exempted from pooling. So it will be interesting to see the final outcome of the government consultation. With regards to an investment up update, this slide gives a general overview of the Shropshire County Pension Fund. The value of the fund as of 31st of March 2015 was over 1.5 billion, which is the highest level. And the membership of the fund now stands at over 42,000 members, which is an increase of over 3,000 from the previous year. The total number of employers within the fund has also increased from 126 to 138 over the last 12 months. Shropshire Council and Telford and Beacon Council continue to be the two largest employers within the fund and represent 75%. The fund continues to have two investment objectives. The primary objective is to aim for a fully funded scheme. In other words, to make sure we have enough money to meet our payments out of pensions in future years. The second objective is to keep the employer's contribution rate as low and stable as possible. The investment management arrangements of the fund are designed to achieve both of these objectives. This chart details where the fund's assets were invested as at 31st of March 2015. How the assets are split is the most important decision that the pension Pensions Committee makes as this has the biggest impact on how the value of the fund grows over time. You can see that we have 57% of the fund invested in equities. 25% in bonds, 10% in hedge funds, 5% in property, and 3% in infrastructure. The chart also shows the current managers responsible for, for those investments. All of the funds continue to be managed externally, and we appoint specialist managers to do this. Each manager is given a benchmark relating to the area in which they invest, and are asked to outperform this benchmark over a three-year period. As you can see, 
From the chart, the fund is well, well diversified, as not all investment types provide um, perform well at the particular time. We choose investment managers with different investment styles for diversification purposes in order to mitigate the risks of the fund in different market conditions. Each of the managers shown specialises in investing in a particular asset class. BlackRock, for example, manages 5% allocation in hedge funds. A general overview of hedge funds, how they fit in with the, within the overall fund and their performance over the last 12 months will be provided in more detail in Ted's presentation. During the year, our investment advisor Aon Huey, in conjunction with officers and members, reviewed the existing bond allocation within the fund. And in June 2015, it was decided to replace the existing investment grade corporate bond allocation, which represents 7.5% of the fund. This was, decision was made due to the fund receiving strong returns from this asset class since 2009. But the future outlook for investment grade corporate bonds means that expected returns going forward is not, a, not as attractive. It was also decided to replace a 10% 10, 10 index linked bond allocation with a liability driven investment or an LDI manager. This is going to replicate the existing 10% holder we have in index linked guilds and therefore produce the same level of returns but will enable the fund to more efficiently match the assets to its interest rate inflation movements with its liabilities going forward. By using an LDI manager, it is also a more efficient way of deploying capital, so assets can be freed up to invest elsewhere. The overall allocation of the bonds remains at 25%. This has now been split between two new unconstrained bond managers, one of which is BlackRock, who will be who have more, will have more flexibility to invest globally within the bond universe rather than just being restricted to corporate bonds. Each manager will manage 7% each of the fund and the LDI manager will manage 3.5% of the portfolio and our existing manager PIMCO will continue to manage 7.5% of the portfolio in absolute return bonds. These changes are expected to increase the overall return of the fund going forward. The strategic asset allocation to equities still remains at 57%, with 25% 20 of this asset allocation being managed passively, but this is being reviewed as part of the joint collaboration we referred to earlier. The allocations to property, hedge funds and infrastructure also remain the same. This graph shows how the fund's portfolios have performed during 2014-15. All of the fund's managers produced positive returns during the last year, which is good news for the fund. You can see that we've got the highest returns from our investment in infrastructure, rising by a notable 40% during the year. Positive returns were also experienced in global equities managed by Investec and MFS, increasing by 21.2% and 19.6% respectively. Private equity also increased by 18.6% during the year. The fund's index-linked bonds increased by 21.1% during the year. This slide shows how this outperformance has impacted on the fund's value during the year. The fund continues to grow and increase by over £173 million last year to be valued at over £1.5 billion, which is its highest level. The value of investments increased by 13.7% during the year and the fund outperformed its benchmark by 1.4%. This outperformance generated an additional £18 million for the fund. The performance of the fund over the last three and five years is also very positive. Overall, the fund increased in value by an average of 12.2% per annum over the last three years, which is 2.4% above the benchmark. And over the last five years, it increased by 9.9% per annum, which is also 1.9% above the benchmark. This slide provides an update on the issues the fund will address over the next 12 months. These include implementing the changes following the review of the bond allocation. We are currently reviewing investment management agreements and once completed, changes can be implemented. We also are in the process of finalising the joint collaboration there with six other funds in relation to passive investments, which should be completed shortly. And we will continue to work with 25 plus other funds in order to submit a joint proposal on two or three fully costed pooling options for the government to consider. Work for this has started to gather pace due to the type of timescales involved 
the final report expected to be submitted to government by February 2016. In addition to this, we'll be preparing for the next actuarial valuation in March 2016, with all employer data required to be submitted to the Funds Actuary by June 2016. Results of the valuation will be known this time next year. The new employer contribution rate has been set for the 1st of April 2017 for the next three financial years. Further detail around the importance of employer data as part of the valuation will be covered in more detail in Deborah's presentation. Finally, to sum up, the structure of the LGPS is going to change going forward, with the government expecting funds to pool assets to significantly reduce costs and come up with options to significantly make savings. With regards to investments, the fund increased in value by 173 million last year, and all the fund's portfolios delivered positive returns. The fund returned 13.47% and outperformed its benchmark by 1.4% which generated an additional £18 million for the fund. Performance over the last three and five years is also very positive. I'll now hand over to Ted Logan from BlackRock to talk about the fund's investments in hedge funds, and provide a general overview of how they fit into the overall portfolio and their performance over the last 12 months. Thank you.